Joe in real life. Okay, so this video is for Russ the Beast, but it's for anyone that wants to learn how to do lucid dreaming. Also, I uh, already said this, but I feel compelled to repeat myself. I do not recommend learning how to lucid dream. Um, I had a really bad time with lucid dreams and it messed my dreaming up for the rest of my life. You might have a different experience and that seems not only plausible, but completely okay with me. I just, I feel like I would be being disingenuous if I recommended this. So I'm not recommending it, but Russ asked a number of people, um, uh, stated that they were curious, so here we go. Uh, the first thing you're gonna need is a notebook. You're gonna need a notebook and some pens. Um, I don't know why this detail matters, but I was instructed this way, that you cannot do anything else with this notebook but dream work. Um, it has a sort of pseudo-magical thinking quality to it, but also, I do feel like it's important somehow. So, go to Dollar Tree or wherever, get yourself a $1 composition notebook, leave it where next to where you sleep, and what you're gonna do with this notebook is every time you wake up, you're gonna write as much as you can remember about your dreams in the book. Um, this works incredibly quickly. So like literally the first time you do it, you're gonna remember almost nothing. Even if you remember nothing at all, just write down, I don't remember any of my dreams. Within literally a couple of days, you're going to find that you're writing, you're gonna get irritated by how much you remember, you know? Um, it's gonna, you'll be writing a lot. Um, and it should be a notebook, meaning don't use your phone, don't use a computer, you gotta handwrite it. Um, I also don't know why that matters, except that I feel the organic connection matters in helping you remember. Um, I got no research to back that up, none. So, you know, buyer beware. But, have a notebook devoted to dreams, Keep it by your bed or wherever you sleep. Writing it every time you wake up. All right? That's, go that's the base building phase, right? In order to have lucid dreams, you need to be able to remember your dreams. So, <laughs> you know, it only makes sense that we have uh, part of our prep work, our warm-up, is remembering work to remember our dreams. The next thing you're going to need is a cue. So you need a cue in the real world to, um, you're kind of like trying to create something in the real world that carries over to the dream world, right? A lot of people use mirrors or their hands. I used door frames. So just to give you an example, I'm explaining this badly, but while awake in the world, Every time I step through a door frame, I take just a second. I stand in the door frame and I say, I'm awake. Or, you know, in my head, not like a crazy person, you know? Um, it can be a little more elaborate than that, you know? Like, if I'm totally honest, I would spend some time in a door frame, just a few seconds, even put my hands on it and just be like, this is reality, I'm awake. You know? Now, why are we doing this, right? Um, at some point, and for me it happened really, really quick, though I have heard it takes some people a few weeks. Um, at some point you're going to have a dream. And in the dream, you're going to be in a door frame or looking at your hands, or looking in a mirror, or, or, or looking at your shoes, you know? It doesn't matter what your cue is. And then you'll, you'll go through the process. You'll stand in the door frame and you'll say, I am awake. You'll have a little moment, you'll have a little habit, routine, thought pattern. 
But when that happens, you'll realize that you're not awake, that you're in a dream, right? And that will be your first lucid dream. Now, your first lucid dream is going to be really underwhelming. Like, it might be that in this example, you get in a door frame, you know, and you stand there and you're dreaming and you say, I am awake. And then you're like, oh, but I'm not awake, I'm asleep. I'm asleep, but oh, I'm doing a lucid dream thing. I'm doing a lucid dream thing and now I know that I'm dreaming. And that might be as far as you get, right? Um, you might go right back into dreaming at that point and you're not able to do anything cool like fly or whatnot. Um, that's fine. You're still in the prep phase. Once you have that moment, once you have that, that kind of like breakthrough moment, keep doing your notebook. Keep doing your cues during the day. Um, every time, every time you walk through a door frame, I am awake. This is not a dream. Um, as you kind of double down and triple down and quadruple down on this process, it'll start happening more and more when you're asleep. Until you really tip, you know? And there will usually, from, I only have my own experience to go on, but a number of other people that I know of, incidentally, they'll have a major dream where it tips over, you know? Where they truly realize they're asleep. But they've kind of woken up their conscious mind in their sleep. And that dream ends up being pretty fun. You still aren't, like, fully awake. Like, you don't have, like, God powers, you know? But you'll realize that the things that are happening in this dream don't matter if there's a threat in the dream or, like, some sort of, like, quest, say. Dreams end up having, like, weird quests. Um, you're not going to be able to completely escape dream logic, or at least I never did. And, like, just because you know it's a dream doesn't mean that, like, let's say you're afraid of heights, you know? Well, you're still going to be afraid of heights. Like, just because you know it isn't real doesn't mean that you're, you can override a primal fear, you know? But with practice, that gets better. Um, and it can kind of get a lot better. And it happens pretty fast. Um, so those are the basic instructions. And let me know in the comments if you have questions, right? Have a notebook. Have it dedicated just to dream work. Every time you wake up, even if you get up to go pee, open your notebook. Get in the practice of opening your notebook and writing down what you remember, you know? Um... I've had situations where, like, I'll think that I forgot to write in my notebook, or I don't do it anymore, but I used to, you know? I'd be like, oh, I got up and I went about my day and I didn't write down my dream and da da da, I fucked up. And then I'll look at my notebook and I did write, I, I did write in it. I just didn't remember. So, like, it became so habitual that I was literally still unconscious and I wrote in my notebook. Um, weird stuff is gonna, like that, is gonna start happening to you where like the boundary between asleep and awake is gonna get really blurry. You know, obviously in the moments where like on wake up, of course, but weirdly too, before sleep, like, you'll be getting ready for bed and realize that you're kind of asleep already. And I think that this is normal. I think that that happens to us, but we just don't notice it. And like, what I'm saying is you're gonna notice it. Like you're really gonna start noticing how your consciousness drifts in and out more frequently than you'd expect. And that part is super cool. Um, 
a pro tip. I didn't really have to do this, um, but I did it anyway. And if you're having trouble, even with the notebook and the practice, remembering your dreams, set an alarm for the middle of the night. And then when the alarm gets off, goes off, roll over, write, roll back, go to sleep. What you're basically doing is you're doubling your chances, you know? It might be that your sleep schedule has you waking up at an awkward time in, in your sleep cycle and you're very, very distant from your dream phase, you know? So if you set an alarm for the middle of the night, you get two chances to catch your dream phase. I didn't have that problem. I, I did the alarm in the middle of the night just for fun. And I found that it really enriched the speed at which I was able to remember my dreams. Um, so yeah, I'm not clear on how well I explained that. If I didn't explain it great, post some questions in the comments, Russ, or anyone else. I'm happy to flesh out the details. Um, now on to my caveat, the warning. Here's, so first of all, lucid dreaming, right? No, none of the lucid dreaming aficionados will tell you this, okay? You have a lucid dream and like we think about it as, oh, I just, I have better awareness. I have more power in my dreams, I'm, you know? Um, I have superpowers, and there's no downside. There's a massive downside, okay? Like, you, yes, you will have greater powers and greater control, but your dreams will also have greater power and greater control. And at least in my experience, my dreams didn't like that very much. It was not dissimilar than the movie Inception, where... When my dream realized I was fucking with dreams, it kind of went on the attack. And it wasn't as dramatic as Inception. Like, I didn't get in gunfights with shadow versions of myself. But it could get pretty hostile. And, um, well, it was unpleasant. Now, so what, right? It's just a, just a bad dream. So what? I have bad dreams anyway. Who cares? Well, here's the thing. You're blurring the boundary between consciousness and unconsciousness. And that makes it really hard. Again, I'm only speaking from my opinion. It makes it really hard to wake yourself up from a dream. Like, before I did lucid dream training, if I had a nightmare, I could just kind of fucking, almost in a lucid kind of way, rattle myself awake. And... The, then a the dream would just go away, you know? But if you're lucid dreaming, that's wildly less effective. And you're kind of stuck. Like, and here's the thing too. Like, maybe you don't have frequent nightmares. Goody for you, you know? Uh, I do have, I have, quite, I have a nightmare once a week, I'd say. Um... Your first lucid nightmare is you're going to be in hell. <laughs> like, it's awful. It's truly awful. Uh, not only will it be everything that a nightmare normally is, but you're, it's going to be super, super detail-rich. You're going to feel incredibly powerless against it. Like, not like normal powerlessness. You're, like, really, real. I, I don't know how else to say it other than keep tacking reallys on it. Really powerless. You're going to be really powerless. And you're going to have a super hard time getting up. Like, like it's, you're not just going to pull, be able to pull yourself out of it. You, you're going to full well know that you're asleep and that you want to wake up and you're not going to be able to. Um, here's another weird feature. This doesn't happen to everybody, but I'm wondering now if I'm about to confess to a, 
to a mental health problem. <laughs> but okay. Um, sleep paralysis is a very real thing. And you may very well start experiencing that. And also, dreams will bleed over into your waking life. Sometimes, for as much as a half an hour, like, like images that you saw in a dream, you'll see in the world. You'll be awake and you'll see it. So, like, I had a, a nightmare about a spectral rainbow-colored tarantula. And when I woke up, that thing was nested on the pillow next to me. Like, I got up, I screamed, I ran into the bathroom, I took a shower, I brushed my teeth, I splashed some cold water on my face, and then I went back into the bedroom, and it was still there. Um, big as my fist, you know? It still fucks with me, like, for real. Um, so, like, that's my warning. Now... I kind of came off a little heavy-handed and like, um, you know, suggesting you don't do it. But if I'm totally honest, it's non-dangerous and it can be really fun. And if you're a psychonaut, meaning like you like um, psychedelic drugs and breath control work and stuff like that to kind of mess with your consciousness, um, this is an often overlooked aspect of being a psychonaut that, that you might get some stuff out of. Um, and like, I have a particularly virulent and aggressive subconscious. And you might not. Like, you and, you and your subconscious might get along a lot better than me and mine. And you could have some really cool experiences. Mostly really cool experiences. That said, you will have negative ones, and they will not be cool. They will not be cool at all. And I just feel like I have to stress that point, because it can be, I'm not talking about lowercase t traumatizing. I'm talking capital T, real fucking bad time, not good, okay? So, Russ, good luck. Please report back. Let me know how it goes. I think most proper instructions say it'll take about two weeks. In my experience, you might not have a full-on lucid dream within a week, but you will definitely notice shit within a couple days. Like, the first night you write down your dreams... Literally, the second night, you're going to have way richer dreams. Way richer. Um, and by the end of that first week, you're going to be annoyed by how much you have to write when you wake up. Like, for real. It's irritating. Um, so, this video is long. It's almost like 20 minutes. Um, I hope that helped, and I hope you have fun. Um... I guess I'm going to squat now. Let's squat. Okay. Talk to you soon. Good luck. So after my 18 minute long cautionary lecture about lucid dreaming, and then I did um, screwball sideways kettlebell swings. Um, every minute on the minute, six reps, 20 rounds, 120 reps total. Pretty good. Then it was time for regular swings and squats. Uh, feeling my body again, feeling pretty good. You know, still sad, still shitty. Not, but at least able to do some work, which feels nice. Um, I'm just accumulating the swings here, so I'm doing random numbers. And I shot over by quite a bit. And just getting my daily minimum up and down. Honestly, I was pretty smoked after those swings. So, yeah, what else? Oh yeah, I wanted to show this. So James, yeah, I, I wasn't counting the 35 pound kettlebell sideways swings as my swings. I, I did want to make sure 
I got reps with the 70. I think today's 22. It's either 21 or 22. Um, I got somewhere in the 30s or 40s. I wasn't really counting. I just wanted to make sure I got more than the amount, you know? And it seems like you're doing something similar. Oof. I'm a little pooped right now. It feels nice. It feels nice to almost be back in the saddle. I have a little irony injury issue. So my right big toe is broken. And because of that, I've been favoring my left foot. And I strained something in the arch of my left foot. So both my feet are injured. <laughs> Which is hilarious, man. Uh, neither is very serious. You know, people make a big deal about hurting, breaking their foot. And the cure is walk on it. That's the cure. Just walk on it. Like, you'll be fine. You know? I, I genuinely believe, especially with the feet, that people injure it and they do all this stuff to heal. And it makes it worse. You know? Ice is good for pain. That's it. Um, elevation, compression, rest... They're horrible for healing. Absolutely horrible. It, 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 in most cases, I think it genuinely makes it worse. Elevation is ridiculous. Um, it's a pinnacle of pseudoscience. Uh, unless you're bleeding, you know. And compression and rest both limit blood flow. Like, what's healing an injury? Like, it, it, if anything's getting to the injured part to heal it, it's doing it through blood flow. And you're restricting it. Why would you do that? Like, it's nonsense. You know? So, yeah, that's where I'm at. <laughs> um, uh, today's video is weird, for sure. Russ, let me know, man. I hope that, uh, I, I, hope, I hope you have great luck with lucid dreams. I certainly did not. And have no intention of turning them back on. Oh, I should talk you through how to turn them off if you're um, basically stop practicing. That's it. Like, it'll take a couple of weeks for them to stop and you'll still have them sporadically. But, but they will stop if you stop practicing. Um, for the most part. You know what I mean? And that's it, guys. Uh, this is Joe in real life. If you're not interested in lucid dreams, I apologize for today's video. Uh, otherwise, I love y'all. Be good to each other out there today. I got my kids. We're going to watch some Fiona and Cake. And, you know, despite the looming tragedy in my life, life is good. I'll talk to y'all tomorrow. Peace.